Ellie and Crystal. They are TikTok's favourite audiologists, apparently. They have 12.7 million likes on TikTok. That's amazing. 870,000 followers and 19,000 followers on Instagram. Also, all over the news, BuzzFeed, Women's Health, you're famous for chicken nugget earwax. <laughs> I have, I have. And I think you must be the most glamorous audiology team on the planet. I don't think anyone looks as good. <laughs> so if you can just start off by explaining who you are and how you came into audiology, that would be amazing. Okay, I'll start. I'm Dr. Ellie Forsen. Um, I, it's a long story about how I fell into audiology, but it basically didn't start with audiology. I wasn't even quite sure what audiology was, um, but I originally was doing things like physical therapy or looking into optometry, and then, you know, I just started to work with different body parts and eventually found the ears and the head, um, so I took an intro to audiology course at the uh, University of Texas at Austin uh, and fell in love with audiology and knocked out the rest of the prerequisites as fast as I could, and then I was... Uh, lucky enough to be able to get back into the UT Austin doctorate program, which was then another four years. Um, so it was, you know, quite, quite a long haul, but uh, I guess it's just one of the first times I actually liked something, so I didn't feel like I was, I mean, you still have to study, but it just didn't, it felt different than any other course that I had ever taken for anything. Mm. I actually enjoyed it, besides statistics, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Okay. Crystal. I came about to be an audiologist. Uh, actually, I had decided what I wanted to do before the ninth grade. So, the summer of my eighth grade year, my mom said, you know, hey, you're going to be in advanced classes. You need to figure out what your track is going to be. So, I researched it and stumbled upon audiology, and that's what I wanted to be since then. That's a young age. That's a young age to know what you want to do. That's impressive. Also the valedictorian of her high school. Wow. <laughs> we have a very smart cookie in our office. <laughs> all the positive ways you can say that. <laughs> so I'm pretty much the same. I'm obviously nurse trained. I've worked in hospitals for the majority of my adult life. I went into community nursing. So I don't know if you guys have... Do you guys have community nursing in America? Like district nursing? Yeah, so it's it's basically when you nurse people in their own homes because they're housebound. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so when I had my son, I went into district nursing, and in district nursing you're trained to do ear care because you're a lone worker, you're a lone practitioner, and you have to go into people's houses sort of armed with a bit of every knowledge that you have because you don't know what you're going to be confronted with. So that's where I started with is. And a bit like you, it wasn't on my radar of things. I didn't wake up when I was 10 going, yeah, I want to do is. <laughs> but I've seemed to have fallen into it and I love it. And I've got this huge passion for it now. So, and obviously. Do you do other kind of nursing, if you will, other facets? Or are you really just focusing on that where you're focusing? So, so yeah, so we've obviously got the NHS over here. So... I predominantly worked in the NHS and then the NHS have different funding pathways. So when they stopped funding ear care as part of the national health system, practitioners like me weren't allowed to offer that service in communities or in um, the NHS established clinics anymore. So with that, there was a huge demand for people needing to have earwax removal, but there was just nowhere to have it done. And... I knew that I had the skill to do it and I knew that I was trained to do it and I had people coming to me needing to have it done and I thought you know what I might as well I might as well offer this service as an on the side to me working in the NHS so that's what I did and then it was you I found you on TikTok you lot inspired me I saw the machine I thought this is amazing and that's how I sort of fell into it mm. Yeah, I mean, we, we didn't even want to really, honestly, as an audiology clinic, 
Mm -hmm. We didn't want to deal with the earwax before we discovered the ear gator machine. Um, and we did it. We would just refer out to the ear nose and throat physicians. Um, because the other option for suction, which we have here, but, you know, it doesn't work well and it takes forever. And it's, mm -hmm. not, it, it's not dangerous, but in the sense of, like, you know, if, if, if somebody's not blood thinner, they can bleed a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then, obviously, curettes are not any funny either for us. <laughs> we have um it's a standard european machine it's called the pro pulse i don't know if you've heard of it so it's a i actually have one i'll show you one second i have this on my shelf because it's now my vintage piece that i don't use <laughs> so it's this device here which when when it's all you've got you have to use it you don't obviously have a choice however it's not that safe it's not practical you have to fill the water yourself you have to manage the temperature yourself. The pressure gauge is really dodgy. Um, and there's real risk of perforating people's eardrums because the pressure is just, it does what it wants really. So a bit like you, I was sort of on the fence. I didn't really want to offer that service in a community setting when I wasn't 100% satisfied with how safe it was. Um, and then I saw your videos and I thought, wow, this, this machine is revolutionary. It's a complete game changer. And then I realized that there wasn't any in the UK <laughs> and I was totally bummed. And I thought, what am I going to do? Um, and then I contacted Joe and then Joe reached out to me. He flew over from New York to the UK to come and meet me. He sung your praises so much. <laughs> um, yeah. And we brought it over to the UK. I'm trying. I'm really trying. It's not as small as that machine, but it's still portable. <laughs> yeah, but the pro thing, the 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 benefit from the irrigator is that you haven't got to keep filling it. You haven't got to change the temperature on it. It just it just does it, doesn't it? It's so efficient. So yeah, a bit like you, I've put some videos on TikTok. It's gone crazy, and now I've got this huge community of people that are now firing all these ear questions at me so that's where you guys come in <laughs> so the main question that we always get asked is about pulsatile i'm not sure if you say it this way but we call it pulsatile tinnitus so can you briefly explain to people what that is and how they can manage it so, uh, i do want to say one thing dr crystal has an additional certification uh to deal with our tinnitus patients, if you want to just oh, yeah, yeah. touch on that. Amazing. So, um, I've been working with tinnitus patients for um, about 10 years, strictly just the tinnitus patients within my total career. And I have a certification for tinnitus management um, and have done some very intense courses. So, uh, I see a lot, I see the bulk of our tinnitus patients here. Yeah. So they, Amazing. Tinnitus portion with us. Yeah. Um, absolutely. 
So that's, that's actually a really good point. Can you explain to people the difference between what you would class as regular tinnitus and then pulsatile tinnitus? Tinnitus is the umbrella term for any sound in your head or ears. It could be ringing, it could be buzzing, cicadas or crickets, crickets, yeah, uh, it could be whooshing, um, crackling, crackling, bacon sizzling. Uh, the most common one it seems to be is more of a high pitch ringing. Mm. People use like tinnitus and obviously some people call it tinnitus. Mm. Uh, we were trained with the term tinnitus, uh, but we are fine with when, you know, hearing the word tinnitus because it's so common. Tinnitus mm. uh, <laughs> interesting because that worries me slightly because especially here in the UK people come to me because they're really struggling on getting appointments with within our healthcare system our healthcare system is really really struggling at the minute and that really worries me so that's sort of where I come in as the middleman but I refer them to ENT and they're waiting on lists for that in some cases so that then then big red flags get even bigger in those situations so, if it's um, a non-red flag tinnitus, is there any sort of coping mechanisms that you can give people to help deal with it? Because a lot of people I'm noticing have huge mental health impacts when it comes to tinnitus too. It's a cycle because a lot of them have issues with um, anxiety, depression, um, and because, because they hear the tinnitus and then that in turn causes the anxiety, depression, and the, the hearing, it makes it worse mm. and then back around the ground. Stress and anxiety exacerbates tinnitus. Mm. And so it's like it's a cycle of life. So any way that we can get out of that vicious cycle is going to be the very best. Um, one thing that I always recommend, always recommend the hearing test mm -hmm. um, to see if there's hearing loss. Oftentimes, um, the tinnitus is a symptom of the hearing loss. Mm. But we do know that there's no cure for tinnitus, but there's several treatment options. Hearing aids are an option. Sound therapy is an option. Um, and I always tell my patients, it's not so much of what you're listening to, it's how you listen to it. Mm. So if your tinnitus is, let's say, an arbitrary seven, 
never want to set the volume of the sound that you're listening to to a seven, eight, or above that. Mm. Because as soon as you set it to that level, when the sound goes away, the brain says, oh no, we lost a whole bunch of sound. Mm. Then it picks up the amplifiers, and then that makes it worse, potentially. So I always tell patients just to pick a sound that is um, <coughs> um, beneficial to minimizing it, such as brown noise that's been very popular with my patients. Mm. Or frequency, uh, are you referring to uh, through hearing aids, or just even on an app? Uh, an app. They can do that on an app. So I guess you can get brown noise on YouTube, can't you? So that's easily accessible for most people. You can also download hearing aid apps and not necessarily have the hearing aids. It'll obviously just come through the uh, through the speaker of the phone. Um, do you guys have a lot of Amazon Alexa users? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you can have Alexa play uh, things for you. But we're gonna one one app that you might want to recommend is by a manufacturer. Uh, I think it's a Danish manufacturer called Widex. W I D E X. Those are also the hearing aids that we recommend as well. If, especially if there's hearing loss, the patient really ought to consider hearing aids uh, coupled with all this other stuff. But if there's no hearing loss, even patients with no hearing loss will get devices just because they want them in their ear throughout the day. Mm. But if, let's just say there's no hearing loss, they don't want to deal with devices, and they just want some sort of sound therapy, let's say through an app. The Widex, it's called Widex Tinnitus Management. Widex Tinnitus Management. Just the, not the Widex, I hear you. Well, Zen is good. Oh, yeah, that's it. Widex Zen, Z-E-N. Uh, and then I think the rest will come up as Tinnitus Management. It'll be in the Play Store for Android and the Apple Store for iPhone users. Um, I believe the color of the box is blue. Yeah, and it has a ton of different sounds, yes. sound options. You can set it to fault, you know, to turn off after a couple of hours. There's a timer on it. There's relaxation exercises. Um, because I, I myself, especially in the past like year and a half, two years, but two years now, get intermittent tinnitus, and it, it is the scariest thing. I, I just can't believe, like, I, I can't believe I'm getting this. I can't believe it's happening to me. Um, and then it, it does go away once it lasted six hours. I, I was frantically like calling her, like freaking out um, because it's just scary. I mean, even for somebody who, who knows that it's not the end of the world, it, it, it feels like it is, you know? Because yeah. It's safe. It's like, yeah, it's in your head. You know, it's, it's an awful, awful, I don't know, we call it affliction. Um, I hope that they come up with, a, I don't know, if you will, a permanent cure for it someday. Mm. But again, uh, there's a lot of things. Um, that you can do. Also, if, let's say somebody started the medication, there's there's a lot of medication that unfortunately, uh, if you look up the uh, side effects, you'll see tinnitus on there. Mm -hmm. And some medication, let's say, is not something that you have to have. Like I have to have my thyroid meds, so I have to have that. Mm -hmm. So I can't stop that. Um, but some people may have to have blood pressure meds or whatever it is. And then there's some that you don't necessarily, you might be taking that you can get off of it depending on the situation. So something to look into, you know, mm. especially you know, the tinnitus, the onset of the tinnitus being kind of shortly after a certain medication was started, consider that looking into changing that or finding something to or talking to your doctor about it. So what are your thoughts on um, hearing plugs that reduce decibel sounds? Do they help for tinnitus? I don't recommend yes. I recommend them for my patients who have sound tolerance issues. Okay. Sensitivity, mm -hmm. they don't want to hear somebody smacking, things like that, mm -hmm. uh, some reduction. But with tinnitus, it's actually kind of almost doing the opposite. You're mm -hmm. going to hear the sound in your head or your ears even more. Mm -hmm. So it's you're going to highlight it. Okay. Um, you know, we, we want that. Like, that's why a lot of people will say, I noticed it at night. Not that it's, the tinnitus doesn't necessarily just turn on at night. Mm -hmm. It's because all the ambient noise from the, like, the cars and the roads and the air conditioning. Mm-hmm. 
candles on in the dark in the dark room and you see it, it's so bright. Mm-hmm. When you turn the lights on, the can the candle's still burning, so the flame is still it's still there, but it's not as bright because of all the other light that's around it. So that's what Dr. Lee is talking about with the sound. I love that. Room. I love that. That's perfect. That's a really good analogy. I like that. I'm going to, I'm going to nick that from you. (laughs) Okay. So next one, I've got loads of perimenopausal women that are saying since their hormones have started changing, they're experiencing experiencing problems with their ears. So can you shed a bit of light on that situation? two things may be going on with that. Um, Any change in the hormones, the brain is processing that as um, chemically. It's saying, okay, something's changing. I need to compensate (coughs) somewhere for the change, which the brain oftentimes um, may interpret that as a stressor. Whenever the brain is under a stressful event, even if we don't feel it in our bodies, um, the brain is going to turn, go into your fight, flight, or freeze mode. That heightens your senses, heightens your vision, heightens your hearing. And if at that time, which we know a lot of our older patients do have hearing loss that can, um, is most noticed around that time, then you have the hearing loss and then you have chemical changes that are happening and the brain is in overdrive. So a little bit of what's going on there is the changes that are happening and the brain's interpretation of it. So they hear this sort of the sound that's going. Okay, that's great. So in relation to that as well, this isn't on my list of questions, sorry guys. But I also have a lot of people that say they can hear heartbeat noises in their ears and a lot of people seem to think it's related to low iron. I'm really interested. Mm. Okay. So it's actually a lot of pregnant women actually which i guess you can have low you can have iron deficiency when you're pregnant can't you sorry yeah, that just popped in iron supplements the joys of iron supplements <laughs> we won't go any further into that one <laughs> okay so grommets you guys obviously call them tubes. So, how long should they stay in situ for? Um, usually, I mean, like, okay, so it's kind of a kids versus adult thing too, yes. right? Oh, okay. So with kids, they have a, I, mean, I usually think they usually last for about, I don't know, six months, maybe eight to a year. Mm-hmm. Right, yes. Um, and then with adults, because it's rare for adults to have issues middle ear issues and fluid buildup and things like that as compared to children, mm. um, they they usually, from my experience, will use tea tubes. Yeah. So instead of just a tube, it's shaped like a tea, like molly bowl. And so it has flanges that keep it, that keep it in longer. Uh, so it can stand for years. It can stand for years. Years. Uh, so- you know, just So if they're in for years, how should they have regular checkups? So we've had one guy that sent in a question that said that he's had them in for over 10 years. He's never had them checked. Should he be concerned? Yeah, and it's not functioning anymore. 
So that brings me on to the next question. Someone has asked, which actually I hadn't thought of before, can they fall into the middle ear? Can they fall out the wrong way? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, um, next question. Any advice on TMJ? See your dentist. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Where it's a big one, big, big one. So people come in for ear pain, and they right. can also complain of tinnitus too. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, TMJ patients definitely can complain of tinnitus. Patients with neck issues can also complain of tinnitus. Mm -hmm. um, but with uh, TMJ specifically, uh, if I always like if we check everything, everything looks good, eardrop pressure is good, there's no lack, no hearing loss, no this, no that. to listen to this because I'm the worst teeth grinder ever <laughs> so hopefully this is I'd worry that I couldn't breathe with it in and sleep it off yeah I, I don't know <laughs> one that everyone always asks and it's the typical audiologist ear nurse question should I be using q-tips should I be using cotton buds if I had a pound or if you guys had a dollar for every time someone asked you that I think everyone reaches for them everyone reaches for them don't they at some point it's just, it's inevitable. something in their ear. Deeper in there, so you may get some of it out because it looks like ooh, all this gooey 
wax just came out, but you also will probably push some of that in. And over time, it will get impacted, and then you'll have to come see it. So. People are always fooled by the tiny little piece they can see on the end of their cotton bud. Always. <laughs> okay, so last question for the both of you. This is more of a fun one. What's the worst thing you pulled out of someone's ear? Ellie first. A bone? Bone fragments of some sort, maybe. It literally looked like a dog's skin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. It felt very bone-like and had that bone-like animal. It's on our TikTok, at Dr. Ellie. Doctor spelled out E-L-L-Y. And it has probably, I don't know, maybe 20 million views by now on that one. Wow. But it, it looks like the, the image on our TikTok, it looks almost like a I had a shell, I've had a shell, I've had a BB gun pellet in someone's ear and my nearest one to your bone was I had a really young boy that his tooth had fell out in school and he wanted to keep it safe so he put it in his ear and he forgot that he put it in his ear and his mum wondered why his ear was so sore and we, he, he came in and there was the tooth in his ear. <laughs> it's so interesting though, isn't it? <laughs> so do I you're just so lucky because there's more than one of you it's me trying to film and do the irrigation at the same time There's such, you have to get the angle in order for it to be like that video. <laughs> so that's all done. So thank you so much. And hopefully we've helped educate the ear nurse community a little bit more. And yeah, I really appreciate it. And it was really fun talking to you both. You guys say cheerio. Cheerio. <laughs> Have a nice day. Thank you so much. Bye. See you on Instagram and TikTok.